Hey, hi, how are you? <laughs> hey, hi, how are you? It's Stephanie Stallworth, ADL Traffic Lady, and how we flow. Today TV. Once again, we're back with another video. Back with another banger. What up, though? Happy Wednesday. We're in Holy Week. Still in Holy Week. We're Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. And what are you really doing? What are we doing? Well, I've been a little under the weather, so I might be a little snuffly snuffing on here. My apologies in advance. Let me get through this thing. Try to do it as quickly as possible. Quickly as possible. Quickly, 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 quickly. So, all right. Today's video is entitled, dun, 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 dun. let's see. What in the Krabby Patty is going zones? <laughs> get out of that pot, will you? <laughs> By golly. What in the Krabby Patty is going on? Get yourself out of that pot, okay? Oh, I can't, but you can. You have the power to do it. You got the the power within you to do that thing. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So there was a, uh, let me see if I can pull this thing in. There was a scenario, scenario that I saw online. You might have seen it recently. I don't even know how old it is. It might be um, some kind of super old, who knows? Um, let me pull this one in and, um, or, uh, I guess I should have pre-produced this, huh? <laughs> I should have pre-produced that part. But let me pull this in real quick and let us see Oops, what is happening here. There we go. Yeah, it's a, a crab eating food out of the pot, right? So... I'll try to pull this in. We're going to be doing a bit of a self-assessment today. An honest self-assessment. An honest self-assessment. Honest self-assessment. Okay. So let's think about our honest self-assessment. That's what we're going to do. That's what we are going to do. Let me pull a couple of these uh, slides in here with you. All right, all right, all right. What you been doing? What is going on? Oh, I've been here, there, and everywhere. And uh, trying to get over this slightly under the weather scenario here. You know, but God is able. God is able. Let's see this other one in a second. Screen, share screen, and let's just do this. I'll do the other one for you. Do the other one. You do the other one. You do the other one. The other one. Why not? I know what to do. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this back over here. And then I'm going to pull this one into there on its own. And let's see. Is that? <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So, all right, let me just show this one real fast. So you'll know what it is that I'm speaking of when I said, what in the Krabby Patty is going on here? And to get yourself out of the pot, right? Let me see if I can pull this puppy in. And see how to get yourself out of the pot. Let's see if I can re refresh this thing. Let's see where it is. Refresh, refresh. All right. It's a crab eating food out of the pot. You probably have seen this, right? He's just sitting there in the boiling pot of water, eating a Cheddar Bay biscuit, maybe. <laughs> And saying, "Way, well, this is a nice little hot tub experience. They even had food for me. Right? It's sort of like uh, <laughs> in the Looney Tunes days and cartoons when, uh, who was it? Bugs Bunny was getting cooked in the pot. He said, rabbit stew. Hey, rabbit stew. Mm, sounds good. But uh, 
where are you going to get the rabbit? <laughs> I think it was Elmer Fudd. He said, we've already got the rabbit. Meanwhile, he's singing in the bathtub. Or maybe it's, uh, Daffy Duck does that. Also, singing in the bathtub. He's like in the pot, like it's a bathtub, putting all this, uh, the broth all on him. Oh, it's, you know, it's all warm and great. Feels great in here. But this crab is sitting here eating uh, a biscuit as they're being boiled to pieces. They are about to be out of life, right? And they don't even know it. Don't even know. Look for this on TikTok under Andre Bremer. Andre Bremer, right here. Andre Bremer, because I can't, can't play it that well here. But there, you can see it. They're picking off of this little biscuit thing here with the crabby things and putting it in its mouth. Like, what are we doing right now? <laughs> What is going on with this thing? So some some of us find ourselves in that situation. We are right here in the pot of boiling broth that is going to cook us alive, chilling out, having a Cheddar Bay biscuit. Yeah, I wish it would show better, but you know what it is. So if it shows it moving, you show it picking a little piece off the food and putting it right in its mouth. Meanwhile, it's being cooked up itself. <sighs> Do you ever find yourself in that position? Do you find yourself in that position? That's the question of the day. What in the crabby patty is going on here? What are we doing right now? What are we doing right now? So... Let's think about it. We may all be in that position at some point if we're not self-aware, right? We're not always as self-aware as we may want to be, right? Uh, so, anyhow, this is what I'm talking about here. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Let's just do a self-assessment, an honest self-assessment. Let me ask myself, am I fulfilled in my current relationship with my current partner? Because sometimes you just get into a comfortable space. It's all right. You don't want to go get to know somebody new all over again. It's like, eh, that ain't all I want, but I ain't really going to rope that thing, tie that thing in. But hey, it'll do for now. <laughs> Is that Mr. Right or Mr. Right Now? <laughs> Is that Miss Right or Miss Right Now? Right? And let's just assess ourselves. Am I fulfilled? <laughs> Excuse me. And my current relationship with my current partner. And sometimes, you know, if you're not, you think it's easier to pretend everything is all hunky dory, you know, where you're where you are. And pretending that you're happy where you are. Like I said, you're just used to it. I'm just used to it. I'm not happy where I am, I'm just used to it. It's comfortable been doing this for a while spent a lot of time doing this <laughs> so I might as well keep doing it because we spend a lot of time making a mistake don't mean we gotta keep making it right so that's why I said uh get out of that pot we're just simmering honey we're daffy duck simmering in <laughs> in, in, in the duck pot we are bugs bunny simmering in the rabbit stew pot and we're that crab Simmering in the crab boil, right? They turn the heat up slowly. You don't even recognize that the heat is slowly killing you. You're just used to it. Just used to it. Right? And it's like... <clears throat> like that crab video. The crab just being slowly boiled in the pot with Old Bay seasoning in it. <laughs> while... You know, it sits there and eats a Cheddar Bay biscuit. Like, you know, it's chilling on the beach or something, right? La la la. Oh, this water is warm. Smells good in here. And this biscuit is nice. <laughs> and so, it's we think, we think, we think it's easier to pretend that everything is hunky-dory and just fine where we are. That we're actually happy where we are when we know we're not. But it's easy to pretend that we are. It's easy because we're just used to it. So it's not easier for that crab to sit there chilling in the hot water and be cooked. 
it's just gotten used to the gradual increase in the heat in that lifeless, loveless situation. So, and I'm talking about the crab, but I'm talking about people too. We've all been guilty of this at some point. And if we're guilty of it now, we need to take a look at it, take a self-assessment, right? And so ask yourself, am I pretending that everything is hunky-dory okay and that I'm happy where I am, even though I'm absolutely not? And I think, oh, it's just easier to just ride this thing out. Who wants to start over? It's not easier to sit in the hot water and be cooked. You've just gotten used to the gradual increase in the heat and that loveless situation, that lifeless situation. So, you know, the crab or us, we don't even realize that we're slowly dying. Right? And we'll be eaten by the one who put us in the hot water in the first place. Come on. I'm talking about the crab, I'm talking about people. I'm talking about us. Whoever put you in the hot water in the first place got you in there slowly dying and you think it's, eh, it's comfortable, it's all right, I'm used to it. They will eat him, that crab, and think nothing of it. They will eat you up and think nothing of it. <laughs> and then, like the crabs, I mean, who eats one crab if you're eating crab? You don't need to eat one crab at a crab boil, right, or crab feast. You eat a bunch of crabs. Then they'll eat him and then they'll move on to the next one. Boil them. And, you know, it goes on. Boil them, eat them, then grab three more. <laughs> three more crabs, three more people, and eat them up too, right? And it's like no concern for you or anything. They're going to they gonna eat you up, get what, what they can get from you. The only concern that they have is for what satisfaction they get from consuming you and then tossing out the shells, tossing up what's left of you, right? I'm talking about crabs, talking about people. I put the crab in the pot, talking about the people in the pot, figuratively. So these people that got us in the pot, just like the person who has that crab in the pot, get ready to cook it and eat it. Crab is like chilling. We're like chilling, like, hey, you know, this is cool. It's all right. I'm used to it. It's easier just to stay here. And whoever has you in that position, they only are thinking about you for what they can get satisfaction, why they can get out of you, what things they can get out of you, tangible or intangible, right? What can, what can they get from consuming you and keep you in that low level space? And then when there's nothing left of you to give, because they've used you up, ate everything out of you, and then... They just toss the shells, toss the carcass, whatever, right? So what are we really doing? Are we thinking it's easier to pretend everything is okay where we are, pretending that you're happy where you are when you're really just not, right? So it's like, Self-assessment, honest self-assessment, am I fulfilled in my current relationship with my current partner? Or in, and even if we don't think about relationships, any situation in your life, your current work position, your current uh, social uh, group position, your current anything, family situation, right? I'm talking about crabs in a pot and I'm talking about relationships, but it could be fit for anything, right? So be honest if you're going to assess this stuff. Be honest, because if not... If you're not satisfied, if everything's not hunky-dory and you're not happy where you are or with how it is, even though you're used to it and you've been doing it for a long time, we're just used to it. Eh, yeah, I'm just used to them. I don't want to get to do anything new. If you're not satisfied, the question becomes, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to do about it? You willing to sit there like the crab and just keep eating that biscuit until next thing you know you're... <laughs> You're boiled <laughs> and it's over for you. They eat you up, toss you out and put the next one in like you never existed. They don't want nothing good for you. They want, they want to, to consume you. <laughs> they want to, they want anything they can get out of you. All that meat they're getting out of you. And so what are you willing to do about that? Because it becomes a hard piece. It becomes 
becomes a tipping point decision. Do I, should I stay or should I go? Should I just keep doing what I'm doing? Or am I going to make the hard decision to move into something different? It's going to upset the apple cart. It's going to change everything. Ain't nobody going to be happy about it. But me, right? Because whose life is this? Are you living for them or uh, living to live your best life where you can enhance others' lives? And if you're not satisfied or happy, they must not be enhancing your life. They're just serving a purpose in the moment. So, you know, you got to think about it. It's not fair to that person to stay in a relationship with you or you stay in a relationship with them while imagining somebody else. <laughs> As it happens, right? You're thinking of someone else completely who you're not even, you know, with while you're in a relationship with this other person. It's not fair to them to stay in a relationship with them while imagining someone else in your interactions, right? You know what I mean? It's also unfair to the one that you're thinking of. Why is that, Steph? Because you're giving all of your in-person time and attention to someone else this whole time. While you're thinking of them, you're giving the, the time and attention and in-person space and the love and all of that, whatever comes with it, to somebody else that you're not even that into. So it's unfair to the person that you're, you're, you're loving, you're truly loving, that you're not with. Because it's easier to pretend everything's okay. Easier to pretend I'm happy where I am because it might take some hard work for me to, to get out of this situation. How hard would it be for that crab to get out the pot? Unfortunately, if you ever saw people boiling crabs, as soon as you put them in, they're trying to climb out. But this one ain't even trying to climb out. It's so used to it. He is chilling. Hey, here's a biscuit. Have one of these while I'm sitting here cooking you. So they're going to give you all kind of little special treats while they're cooking you alive just to appease you to keep you there oh yeah i like biscuits i'll take one yeah let me get something to drink too get a little warm but i just want to hydrate myself yeah and you hydrate yourself to get hydrated for when they eat you up alive come on now so you gotta think about it all right um so what are you willing to do when you're in that situation what's the self-assessment for yourself what are you gonna think about so it's unfair for, for the person you're with for you to stay in a relationship with them when you're not even into them like that. And while you're with them, you're thinking of somebody else. It's also unfair to the one you're thinking of because you're giving all your precious good time that the other person would love. They're not trying to cook you in a pot. They're trying to love and care for you. You're giving all that great time and attention and, and you know loving feelings to this person you ain't even into. While the person who would love to receive that from you is getting nothing, right? And then it's unfulfilling for you. <laughs> you know, you're pretending that when you're with this person you're with, that you're pretending and wishing it was someone else. There can't be no satisfaction in that. It's unfulfilling for all involved. The third party too. It is unfulfilling. It's unfulfilling for everybody, right? So it's like um, that crab is in, is in the pot. <laughs> and I'm thinking if I'm the crab in the pot, I'm like, beat me up, Scotty. Get me up out of this joint, right? I got a picture of uh, me with Scotty, my Star Trek. Star Trek stars. Let me see if I find it. Uh, let me share the screen. Yeah, with Star Trek, my Star Trek people, my QVC days. So many people came in for um, selling products and stuff. Let's see if I find this thing here. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Yeah, so I'm in the pot, or you're in the pot. Whoever's in the pot is gonna be talking about, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> I don't wanna be up in this joint, no. Mo, you understand me? Yeah, so let me see where this picture is. Hold on, let me make the screen share work properly. Let me, let me resize this window. So it will work properly for y'all, you dig? Let's see. All right, so here we go. 
this is this is uh, James Dewin and yours truly in the QVC days. I'm a oops, I'm a broadcaster for 36 years. 36 years. Can you see that? Let's see. I said I think so. I didn't say I know it. I said I think it. Let me stop sharing and share it again. Hold up. Wait up, beat it. I need a bigger, a bigger screen on this side. Or put the big screen closer to the microphone so you can still hear me while I look at it. All right, let me try it again. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Yeah, so that was James Dewin, who is Scotty. Let's see where it is here. Air screen, check. Share screen, check. Check. And check Rooney. Yeah, so let me show you my Star Trek pictures. Beat me up out of this thing, Scotty. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Yeah, because this is not it. That's not it. That's not it. Right? Let's see. Sharing, sharing. Say, that's not it. Right? Hey, Scotty, where'd you go? Oh, blame it on the cold medicine, baby. Don't blame it on me. <laughs> blame it on my head and not my heart. I'm trying to get it right. I'm trying to get it right. I said share. Okay, view tab in StreamYard. Yes. Yes, please and thank you. So we're Imzit. Let's pull it up again. Scotty, where did you go? Oh my God, I need ya. I need ya, need ya, need ya. I need ya, need ya, I need ya. All right, make this big. Clicking share. All right. And there she is. I think. I said I think so. I'm going to go back to a bit. Why am I having a hard time? Oh, I got to pull back up again. See, I see, I see, I see, I see. Got it now. All right. All right, Scotty. So. It's a beam me up Scotty kind of day. <laughs> it's a beam me up Scotty kind of week here. Why? Because I tell you, we've got to do something about what we're doing. And maybe it requires more than what we're doing. So he wrote love, Stephanie. I want to make this the right side. They said, love, Stephanie. What is this thing here? James Dewan. So you see him. That's uh, Scotty from Star Trek. Yes, yeah, so we had a nice dinner with all of the original, well, not all, most of the original Star Trek cast. And they were there selling some Star Trek product, the QVC. Um, one of the other ones was, let me go back. We're going to beam ourselves up out of here. But the other one, the other one, Another one was right here, George Takei. Okay, Takei, you know him, you love him. You see him on social media too. Yep, so he was Sulu. Let me make it bigger. Can you make it bigger, please, Stephanie? All right. So here we go. It's Sulu and I. Sulu and Stephanie. <laughs> oh, I messed up the uh, hand, the hand thing. You see, my thumb is supposed to be out. I didn't do it properly. I thought I knew what I was doing. Boy, we grew up watching that that show though. I just love all the sci-fi stuff. My brothers and I. So here is Sulu with yours truly at QBC. That's my first broadcasting job. So, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, let's see. This will be 36 years of broadcaster. 36 years of broadcast. This is my first broadcasting job. So this is uh, from Star Trek. 
Sulu. George Takei. All right, let's see who's next. Let's see who's next here. Um, I think we got to go back to Scotty and then who else is here? Um, Lieutenant Uhura. Oh, she was such a gracious grand lady. I did not get a picture with her. But she was at the dinner at the dinner table with us. But what a gracious, just a regal presence about her. I loved her. All right. And who's this? Who's my Star Trek fans here? <laughs> Come on, Star Trek fans. Type it in the comments, why don't you? It's Chekhov, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you are correct. That would be Chekhov. Remember him? Of course you do. Who doesn't? No Chekhov. Let's check off and yours truly. My denim dress. Um, back at QVC, backstage. Backstage. Yeah, good times. The broadcast career has been so blessed. God's been so good to me. I'm just eternally grateful. All right, let's see who else we have here. Uh, okay, we go away from Star Trek. I got some more Star Trek, I think, at the end of this thing here. But, uh, Let's see. Coming to the stage. Coming to the stage. Do you know this baseball great? Coming to the backstage, I should say. Oh, let me sit up in my chair so I can see this properly. Coming to the backstage. Backstage. We're up here with Ernie Banks, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, Ernie Banks. What a nice gentleman he was also. Let me move it over. Ernie Banks. We got all these great signed baseballs from all these baseball greats too. Ernie Banks, one of the other super stars that came through. And yours truly was Ernie Banks. What up though? Yeah, so, all right, let's see. Uh, who's next, who's next? And who's next? I'm sharing these pictures while you're thinking about what you're going to do to get out that pot, okay? So I want you to be thinking about that. Well, who is this? Who is this? I got sunshine. Come on now. On a cloudy day. Come on, Smokey Robinson. Another backstage picture. When it's cold outside, I got the month of May. I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? My girl, I know I make you feel this way. Come on off that pot. Stop playing around. My girl, my girl. Not the one that got you in the pot does not make you feel that way. So you mean to go to the one that makes you feel that way. You understand? Another backstage picture at QVC. All right, who else do we have here? All right, while we're going through the pictures, you're thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? All right, here's one of my favorite uh, photos. It's of me and my mom my aunt and richard simmons hey richard simmons loved him what a great guy he, he is a great guy i think he's just back out on his twitter account again so glad to see him active out there again richard simmons love you so much that's richard simmons my auntie my mom here's my auntie going to glory my mom's going to glory and me what up though we had such good times here great times a great time was had by all we love we love you richard if you can see this we love you richard simmons we love you so much he was so gracious was out in uh la once had us over for uh lunch at his house just a really just a genuinely really gracious man love him Thank you, Richard. Love you so much, Will. You're the best. All right. Let's see who's next. Who's next here? All right. Now we're going to the sport of basketball with the NBA. Who, who recognizes these tall fellers, huh? Anyone? Anyone? Some NBA legends. The big O, Oscar Robertson and Sam Lacey. Come on now. Yeah, you know these people are the ones, right? And good old yours truly. <laughs> Backstage at the queue. At QVC. Yeah, so I was a guest coordinator. We're with all those guests that came on. 
and it was just really great really just good people like i was never disappointed with anyone like wow these are really great people so the big old oscar oscar robertson sam lacy you young folks you need to look them up all right nba legends okay and the only one missing in this picture is brian oliver georgia tech star brian oliver he was there too i think he, he left a little earlier so he missed the picture time but the, the three of them were on the show together uh selling some basketball memorabilia of course brian oliver georgia tech fame for their championship march madness and uh then these two nba legends at, at the time i think brian was a philadelphia 76er and qbc is in the philadelphia suburb so so he came out as a sixer to be on the show and the big o oscar robertson and sam lazy came in for the show as well so it was the three of them right nba nba folks it was a good time and a good time was had by all i love that right so what a great what a great time i had in this broadcast career let's see who is next who is next who else do we have uh, another one with with these fellas brian i wish you were there you had to go i think brian you're still down here in atlanta with your family i see you doing uh sports play-by-play -play coverage so glad to see you so here we are once again all right all right all right let's see who's next Oops, let's see who's next oh another philadelphia uh fan favorite former eagles quarterback now Minister of the Gospel, Randall Cunningham at the queue. He had that flat top. Check that out. Come on now. Who remembers a flat top, Sal? Did y'all have one? Or did your, anybody you know, your older cousin have one? <laughs> Maybe you're old enough to have been here for that. Oh, yes. That was so good, right? It was a, a nice, it was a nice flat top. Good person, too. Another good person. So it's Randall Cunningham. And he was a, was he currently the? He must have currently been the quarterback. I don't know. This is a long time ago. He might not have still been the quarterback. But he had, I think he had his own show. So maybe he was still the quarterback. You know how they give, give the quarterbacks their own shows. Their own TV shows in some cities. So he was way taller than me. Like, like Sam Lacey, Oscar Robertson. <laughs> way taller than me. I had on high heels that day. All right. Um, let's see who's next. Let's see who's next. Oh, Rod Carew. Come on, baseball. Great Rod Carew. You remember Rod Carew? Anybody know Rod Carew? These are legends, okay? Come on now. Rod Carew with yours truly. So they all come on and sell this sports memorabilia. This is 1991. Wow. Um, sports memorabilia with Rod Carew. Baseball memorabilia. I have so many signed baseballs from these folks here. Just really good. Good times, right? I'm not really like a starstruck person. I don't really care about, oh my gosh, they're so awesome. But I knew I would want to have the, the photographs to you know, look back on years later on some of the people that came through. So it's been good to still have these. Okay, okay, let's go into TV to, oops, to acting, to acting. Let's go to, do you recognize her? Let me make it, whoops, make it bigger. Try to make it bigger from Police Woman, Police Woman TV show. That was in the 70s. Angie Dickinson, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, Angie Dickinson. With yours truly, Stephanie Sullivan. But yeah, Angie Dickinson, she came in to sell some stuff. She was a nice lady also. So many great ladies. I remember Carol Channing came and loved her. I don't, I don't know where her picture is, I gotta find it. You know, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. She was, extra kind to me and I appreciate her appreciate her all right thank you Angie Dickinson policewoman all right come on back to baseball or back to baseball um oops. this is Willie Stargell ladies and gentlemen baseball great Willie Stargell recognize his face yeah he was very kind these people are so nice right very kind, very kind. Willie Stargell, ladies and gentlemen. Willie Stargell. You need to Google these names if you don't know who these people are. Yes, indeed. Thank you. He was very kind as well. All right. Let's see who's on the next. Is there any more? Oh, 
To the moon, Alice! To the moon! <laughs> Come on, Honeymooners fans. Oh, with Ralph Cramden. Alice Cramden. This is Audrey Meadows, ladies and gentlemen. Audrey Meadows. What a gracious lady she was, right? Backstage at the cute Audrey Meadows. Right? So, and she was selling Honeymooners, something from the Honeymooners TV show. Come on, classic. These are classics, right? All right. Uh, thank you, Audrey Meadows. I used to watch that black and white show. They have reruns on. Here's another one. Lynn Redgrave. Remember Lynn Redgrave? She had a book out. This is Living was her book. And so, again, back at QVC with Lynn Redgrave. So many of these folks have gone on to glory now, but, you know, they were at their, they were in their good times here in these moments, right? Lynn Redgrave with her book, This is Living. All right. Thank you, Lynn Redgrave. Let's see who else. Oh, yes, this is my, when I was, I was my, I, you know, I worked at QVC and then I modeled the clothes and the jewelry and all the other stuff on, uh, on the, on the uh, channel also. So home televised shopping is in my blood, baby. That's why the flow's got a whole shopping, uh, arm to it. We have televised shopping here coming up this year, but here's me looking at Katie. They're like, Stephanie, look at Katie. Katie, look at Stephanie. So Katie and I, we, were, we worked backstage and, and worked with the, the talent and stuff. And then we were the models. And then Ellen, Ellen Langus Campbell, Ellen Langus is, uh, was a show host. So this is here for, must have been QVC's catalog to um, sell their products. They had, a, they had a catalog. I don't think they had, there was no online presences back then. So if you wanted to sell besides when you were just on the air, they sent the catalogs out to their customers. So this is, I don't know what page this is, but you know, we're selling all these products here, fashion formulas, this and that. I was cute though, why not? Come on now. I've been, I've been doing this stuff. I've been in, right? What would uh, Lizzo say? I don't play games. I've been it. Come on, I've been it. Just before there was social media. So, had there been social media then, it, you know, that's when people get more notoriety. But I've been it, honey. Been doing this thing. Been doing this thing. Come on, Katie. Come on, Ellen. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. And let's see. Let's get something else from QVC here. Oh, backstage at QVC, one of my backstage co-workers, right? This young Stephanie, look at that young Stephanie. They got the light in her eyes. She had to get beat down by people. <laughs> beat down by life. I'm springing back though, I'm springing back. Yeah, so we had good times. This is a great place to work at the time. I don't know what it's like now. It's a little different now, I guess, but it was a mom and pop owned, owned uh, company by the Seagulls. Mr. and Mrs. Siegel were the owners of QVC before they sold it to the bigger companies, right? So that's me and one of my backstage partners. We had uniforms and stuff. Uh, I, th I think actually he worked up in the control room um, and I was backstage. So I don't think control room didn't have uniforms, but backstage did because we could be seen on camera. So they got tired of everybody just looking like any old thing <laughs> with their little t-shirts that had logos and stuff on there that might be seen on camera. They said, all right, everybody's going to have uniforms. So we all had these uniforms. So we looked uniform. Uh, who's next? Who's next? Any more? Oh, another QVC. This is when QVC uh, ventured into a new channel called the Fashion Channel. So they always had QVC televised shopping. And, you know, they have many channels now, you know, QVC Europe, QVC this and that, everything, everywhere. But their first venture, from what I can recall, into a whole nother channel, because fashion had sold so well, is the QVC Fashion Channel. It's the Fashion Channel. So here we are modeling again, Katie and I. Uh, Katie Mack, Katie McIntosh, Stephanie Lloyd at the time, and uh, Bill Ballier here on camera. So we're out here doing more fashion formulas. Yeah, I was a slim goodie. You know, I had my six pack then. What up, Sal? So they had this whole article about it. Um, the QVC Fashion Channel. And then here were some of the other uh, models that came on. Once the Fashion Channel came on, they needed uh, models all around the clock. 
so they got some other folks that came in so that was good and uh here is ron giles who was the head of the whole thing come on ron giles good to see you here once again on facebook he's got some books out too he's authored some books so look for ron giles executive vice president and executive producer um yeah so this was a really good time so this television thing i've been doing this thing for a minute for like a lot of minutes right and it's in me it's in my blood and that's why my platform my streaming service to flow is going to be super sized so if you want to get on it you better get on it now because you know the price is going to be different here in a minute but um yeah we just had a lot of fun and it's like some people don't know what they're going to do when they get out of uh, high school i knew i was going to be a broadcaster so i knew what major i was going to pick i knew what career i was going to be in. i knew i was going to be a success and so and here i am still doing it 30 something years later still in the major market, still, you know, in, in good positioning and still doing all that God allows me to do. So it's been a blessing. So here's Ellen again. And then myself, I think we're, we're doing a snakeskin belt or something. <laughs> I don't know what we were selling. Uh, scarves and scarf clips and belts and what is this thing? Scarves, scarf clips and belts, accessories, right? And then uh, where are we here? See, these are the scarf clips. <laughs> and scarves. I still love scarves to this day. I do. And this is a belt. What kind of belt is this? Lee Sands. Oh, Lee Sands. I used to love him. He was in Hawaii, based in Hawaii, and he would have snakeskin uh, belts and accessories, bags, wallets, purses. He also had these great peacock uh, accessories, wallets, belts, everything. I love the peacock stuff. I don't see it on this page. And um, eel skin was his main thing, eel skin. So he would use eel skin. It was so soft and smooth and it's beautiful. Lee Sands, I don't know if he's still doing it. Most things I look for Lee Sands, I see, uh, you know, in resales. No, not so much current sales. I don't know where Lee Sands is today. This is many moons ago. But yeah, so there's yours truly. Modeling something here. The, oh, the, uh, what do they call it? What kind of belt is it? It's the... Uh, the prices were good. Prices these days, great. Um, what are the prices? I don't even see it. But yeah, so, you know, I've been doing this thing. Y'all think I'm new to this. I ain't new to this thing. Been doing this thing. I'm doing it in my sleep. This is the, let me see if I see. What kind of belt is it? I think I said snakeskin. It's a Lee Sands belt, right? Yeah, yeah Lee Sands snakeskin belt. Regular price thirty five, member price fifteen fifty three with two ninety seven shipping. What the price is? How do we do it? We used to have Marty, uh, Marty Jacobs, who was a huge uh, children's TV show host back in Philly, and then he became a show host for QVC. Hey, Marty Jacobs, I don't know where you are, and he would say, uh, "How do we do it? Volume, because QVC was sell in such volume, they could get." great deals with the uh you know the vendors who are selling the products which is how they still do it because you know if you're apple or your KitchenAid selling your stand mixer and you're going to sell in you know the three minute segment you're going to sell two thousand of them but in three minutes at at uh nordstrom you're only going to sell maybe one heck you're going to sell that many we're going to give you better pricing, going to give you all these uh, exclusive colors, exclusive this and that. So when you're selling in volume, you can get specialty pricing and specialty features and options. Same thing with their Apple deals. Same thing with their, you know, all of that, all of that. So um, that's where we are. But hey, Ellen and, and me and Lee. Lee Sands, Lee Sands. All right, all right, all right. Let's see who else is here. I don't know if these are all QVC. Might be a mixture of. I don't even know what. Oh, college. <laughs> These are the Kappas. Hey, noops. KO knockout chapter. Kappa Omega knockout chapter. Noops in the house. Rest well to Monty G. And let's see who else is here. I think they were doing something here. What was that? Bell Biv DeVoe had a song. Um, more noops, more noops. There's another noop, another noop. More noops, more noops, AKs and QEs. Um, 
Oh, they're doing, uh, what's it? Smack it up, smack it up. <laughs> Flip it, rub it down. Oh no, what song is that? <laughs> I think that's Bill Bib DeVoe. <laughs> oh, we just had fun. It was just fun times. Fun times indeed, right? And then here we are. This is me and, and my girlfriend um, back at, it's been homecoming. We're back for homecoming or something. And, um, you know, AKs in the house. Young Soror's in the house. This here, this was actually my first car. <laughs> and I was such a goofball. I sold it to our uh, one of our friends for like 300 bucks, $350 I sold him the car for. It was just a goofy, goofy uh, thing. I had bought a new car, a brand new car. Um, my first brand new car. My second car was a brand new car. And I'm like, hey, yeah, you can have this. And so he drove it everywhere. That was the uh, Datsun B210 hatchback. Good times there, good times. Virginia Beach, Labor Day weekend. One of my high school buddies rests his precious soul in heaven. There's my Soror girlfriend again. Another rest soul in heaven for Debbie. What's up, Keith? Noops. Oh boy, we got everything. High school cheerleader life. What up, though? <laughs> Little kid life. Come on, Stephanie. What are you doing, girl? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So then I became a mother. Look at these little lovekins. Oh, I love these little kiddos. They're so wonderful. Ah. That's my baby. He was probably like a month old. Two months old, maybe. Maybe three months old. This is my oldest. And, you know, you see this little baby face here? I tell you, God always shows me stuff before it happens. So, so he showed me in a dream my son, and he was still little like this. He's probably like a little older than this, but not much. Same face, right? And he showed, him, showed me him with the same little baby face, but he was super tall, like, oh my gosh. But he still was the same little kid, my same kid with a baby face, but he was super tall. And now that kid is six foot eight. So God showed me he's gonna be super sized, right? But yeah, so these are my, these are my little love bugs. Two of them anyway. Hashtag my three sons. These two are 11 months apart. Hey, what up, though? I love motherhood. It's the best thing ever. All right, here we are, QEs, out here uh, in the step show. Is that the Omegas? Here's the Omegas. Here's the Qs. Kappas. Q step show. Kappas. Qs. This is at the Greek picnic with Qs. Qs. Q's, uh, Kappa's and Kappa Sweetheart and QE's, and Amid too, Men Interested in Delta. So, that's all from college. All right, back to QVC. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. It's Reggie Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. Reggie Jackson. What up, though? Did y'all see his doc that documentary he was in? It's very good. You should really check it out. I forget where it was streaming. It was maybe sometime last year I watched it. Early, early to mid last year. Look for a documentary with, with Reggie Jackson. Um, really good, really insightful stuff. But come on, Mr. October, what? You don't know who that is? Y'all better, y'all better know who that is. Reggie Jackson. He had the candy bar. Him and Hank Aaron had the candy bar. Hank had the O. Henry candy bar. And Reggie Jackson had the, the Reggie candy bar. Now, if you in the in those years had a candy bar, come on now. There was Babe Ruth, the O. Henry, the Reggie bar. You get a candy bar named after you. I don't think Babe Ruth was named after Babe Ruth, but maybe it was. I don't know. But I know those, those were named after these guys. Reggie Jackson, Mr. October, right? Yeah. He was a good person, too. Um, let's see. I think I got maybe one more. Let's see. Um, oh, look at look at this. Now we're in the NHL, National Hockey League. Does anyone know who this is? I'm going on to glory, too, I believe. This is Gordy Howe, Mr. Hockey. Mr. Hockey, Gordy Howe. Y'all know him? Who's with hockey fans here? Any hockey fans going to know him? Gordy Howe, Mr. Hockey. What a, a gentleman also. Some really great people. Very good times. 
This is my first broadcast job. Come on now. God just be blessing this girl. Come on. Come get on the blessing train with me. And, and the one, the only, Hammer and Hank Aaron. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Come on, Hank Aaron. So he was at QVC also. What a gracious gentleman he was also. Very, very uh, kind. I was grateful for him. In fact, because um, he was with the Braves organization uh, at that time in the, uh, what do you call it? The, in the office? What do you call that? The front office? Is that what they call it? In the front office. You know, he wasn't playing for them anymore, but he, he had the front office job or whatever. And he may have been in that Reggie documentary. So you got to check that out for sure. Because they both had some great, important uh, insight to say about what it was really like in these days. Uh, when you're in the front office, what does that really mean, right? What does that really mean? Yeah, y'all got to check that out. I forget what it's called. But it's Reggie Jackson is the main documentary uh, person. And then I, don't know, I think Hank Aaron was in it or he talked about Hank Aaron. And I think... If Kareem was in it, I don't have a picture with Kareem. Kareem was here too, and you know, <laughs> he when Kareem, I walked Kareem onto the stage, and he was. Uh, I only came. I'm like five, eight, five, nine. I only came up to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's elbow. <laughs> I felt like a little kid, like oh my gosh, right? And so, the green room story about that day he came. Um, you know, all the big wigs were in, were in the in the room, and waiting for him to come and all that stuff. And I'm in there, you know, just to help with the, the guest coordination and make sure they're mic'd up and everything's good. And so he comes in, and you know, he got to duck his head down in the door, <laughs> and then step back in. And everybody's like, duh, 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 duh. and then he comes in, and then everybody's like, oh, you know, and they were just like mouth gaping open, and no one said anything. No one welcomed him in or nothing. They were just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, well, hello and welcome because, you know, I'm talking about the big wigs were in the room, but they didn't say anything. I was like, well, let me say something and then break the ice and then everybody else will start talking. But <laughs> it was really great. It was just really great to see, you know, different people re respond to some of their, uh, you know, sports heroes or, you know, acting heroes or whomever, right? When all the people came in. But Hank Aaron, stand up, gentlemen, rest his uh, soul. I think I can have his his signed baseball also but he was kind enough to uh, give me a moment to meet him at his office I came down here to Atlanta because I, I knew I wanted to move to Atlanta at some point and so I came to Atlanta I was looking for work and see what was going on down here in broadcasting and so he let me come in and uh, sit with him for a while and just talk about Atlanta and what's going on in the market and everything and uh, he was just gracious enough you know I was just trying to see what's going on in Atlanta, and he, and he allowed me to to come and sit in his office with him and talk about some stuff and try to see what kind of direction I was going to head in. As you see, I ended up here. In fact, I ended up here twice. <laughs> First time I came here, I was a radio broadcast meteorologist at the Weather Channel. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a weather a weather forecaster, TV and radio weather forecaster, TV and radio traffic person, and you know, show host, etc. But, you know, just media personality all over. But he was so gracious to even give me any time. He didn't have to. I'm, I'm eternally grateful to him for that. It was just very, very kind and very helpful. So I appreciate that in his memory. Um, so, yeah, but I ended up here. Sure did. Sure did. God always blesses me. I'm so grateful to God also, right? God is good. He is good. So I know I'm I'm showing you these. This might be the last one. I'm showing you these pictures while you're supposed to be thinking that self-assessment, that honest self-assessment. Am I fulfilled in my current relationship with my current partner? Uh, be honest about what you're willing to do if you're not, right? Think of what's fair to you, fair to them, fair to the third party that you really care about and all of those things and all of that, all of that, right? All of those things. We think it's easier pretend everything is all perfect and great even though it's not let me just act like it is it's a lot of what's that thing uh what wesley snipes say in a white men can't jump can't jump movie it's some hard doggone work <laughs> it's some hard doggone work to make something this pretty look like a jump it's so hard it's some hard doggone work to come up out of that crab boil pot while you're chilling eating a biscuit 
<laughs> thinking you just in the hot tub chilling and it just happened to smell like Cheddar Bay. Happened to smell like Old Bay seasoning. Little do you know you're being cooked alive by these people or this person in your life while you are pining secretly for this other individual, right? So are you going to do something about it or not? And sometimes people don't do anything about it, but I'm just hoping that in the How We Flow That Day community that we will go ahead and, and, and uh, take some steps towards what it is that we're really trying to do. So again, uh, the main reason that I started showing these pictures was uh, the Beam Me Up Scotty, right? With uh, James Dewan. Let me go back to that one at the beginning. James Dewan. Let me flip back through these pictures. Hopefully it'll flip. Flip, 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 flip. Because we're going to flip the switch. I'm flipping back, flipping back. Let me go back to the beginning. Flip, 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 flip. Flip, 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 flip. Flipping, 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 flipping. Flipping, 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 flipping. Smack it up, flip it, rub it down. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Do me, baby. The Fashion Channel. I've been it. Andrew Dickinson, Police Story. Oscar Robertson, Sam Lacey, Richard Simmons, so many greats. Smokey Robinson, Rod Carew. Um, here we go. Sulu. All right. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up. Beam you up or whomever up out of that doggone crab pot where you're in there just eating the Cheddar Bay biscuit like you're chilling. When really, you're, they're killing you. <laughs> You're not chilling, you're getting killed. Slowly, boiled to death. And then they'll eat you, consume you, take whatever you got, does anything good, toss you out and get three more just like you. <laughs> three more crab juice, who eats one crab, crab piece? Three more just like you, toss them out too and then move on to the next, burp and move on to the next, burp and move on to the next. You gotta free yourself from that whole energy, baby. So it's like, beat me up, Scotty get me up out of here <laughs> so come on let's flip that switch on the slow boil right flip your switch on the slow boil it's a slow boil theory and it works before you know what you did you done you don't have nothing left it's how a narcissist draw you up that slow boil theory hop out that pot Run from that storyline where you slowly get consumed. You slowly die. You're consumed. Right? Your real life and love. You think about real life and real love. It's about being made to feel alive, not to be slowly killed. Real love in real, in real life is made to feel alive and enjoying the moments leading to a satisfac satisfying and fulfilling end. That's what we all really want. Well, most people. Some people love the misery, but I'm hoping here in our community we don't love the misery. <laughs> Sometimes we all get stuck in the misery. It, it happens. I ain't pointing no fingers, no shame. I'm just here to help. Because <laughs> I just flipped that switch. I'm coming up out of that. I came up out of that thing. I'm like, I'm not doing that. You know? Got a tough tough 13 years I was living for a while I said mm -mm, no more we got to be free we can be free together take our time right it's gonna be all right Rochelle Farrell said it will be all right it will be all right it will be all right I promise you it will be all right all right thank you Scotty you beamed us up out of that pot energy because we are not here for it yeah dag you dig, you dig, and you dig. So, all right, I got a resource for today that will loosely connect to what we're talking about um, here. Let me see. Put my cover back up. This one here. Overlay. Yeah, so what is my resource? It's called How We Told Out Today Resource How to Unlock Your Full Potential. So, it's called Unlock Your Full Potential. Unlock Your Full Potential. And what it teaches you is how to unlock your full potential so you can attract all your desires. So if you're desiring this other individual, 
that you really feel it for yet you're pretending the person you're with is them when you're with them when they're not them no one can be them except them but you're pacifying yourself <laughs> in that situation of the of the of the crab pot that you're boiling in slowly as they slowly kill you literally or figuratively it just takes the life out of you right and you just get stuck and you spend all your time and energy trying to make it feel good trying to make it feel right and you just try to fool yourself when you got to come up out of there so this resource unlock your full potential will show you how to unlock your full potential so you can attract all your desires right and let's think about desires God will give you the desires of your heart when you make his desires for you your desires if you just desire whatever you want to desire and it's not what God desires for you he's not going to give you the desires of your heart but when you flip that switch and say all right God you created me you know exactly what's best for me Yolanda Adam then you're gonna tell me what best desires are, are right for me too because there's all kinds of things out there to desire. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're in this pot of boiling water, slowly uh, being the life drained out of you, you don't even realize it. She's like, oh, let's just pretend it's okay. Let's just pretend that this person is the person I want. Oh, let's just pretend all those things. You know, if God gave you the desire for this, for whoever, this other individual, and you desire them, and and he's going to give you the desires of your heart when you make uh, his desires your desires. And his desire for you is your desire. But are you willing? What are you willing to do? That's the question we asked at the beginning. What are you going to do about it? What are you willing to do about it to get to that desirable place, right? That desirable life. I want that desirable life. It's right there waiting for me. And I want it, but I'm stuck in the crab pot. Beat me up, Scotty. Get me out of here. <laughs> that's the only way I'm gonna get out is to get beamed up <laughs> I need I need somebody to beam me up because I, I can't pull myself up out of here but this biscuit's so good they keep giving me these good biscuits Ooh. oh the water's so warm I tell you and I'm not pointing any fingers I'm telling you I know it's hard to get up out of that thing well maybe I'll just stay here I, I, I've done it I know it so I'm just trying to help you. I'm here to be your help. We're here to help each other. It's how we feel out today, community. We're helping each other, helping each other to unlock our full potential so we can attract all of our desires when we make God's desires our desires for ourselves. So why don't we get up out of the pot? We got some self-doubt, some hopelessness. <laughs> Let's end the cycle of self-doubt and hopelessness to unlock your full potential Attract your desires and live your best life ever. <laughs> we always talk about that. Let me get a sip of my tea, my fruit, my float. Let me clear my float. I'm <laughs> biggie small. Mm. Yeah, so let's live our best life ever. Best lives ever. That's what we're doing here in How We Flow. Today. You can join our community at How We Flow. Today on Instagram. Website will be back up soon, howieflow.today instead of .com. It'll be .today. And uh, according to Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, a couple years back, they said around 17.3 million American adults suffered from major depressive disorder. And even children suffering from depression, substance abuse, anxiety. Uh, in fact, they found uh, in that study around 1.9 million children between ages of 3 and 17 were diagnosed with some form of depression. So kiddos are going through it, too. The kiddos are going through it, too. Dr. Brian, I think you touched on that about, you know, the kid can't even get out the bed. The kiddos go through it. They do. And so to make matters worse, two out of three people who are suffering from depression do not receive proper treatment that they need. That's why I always say, please go to your therapist, go to your doctor um, and get the treatment you need. It's OK to get the treatment. Mental health is health. If your arm was broken, would you just let it set on its own? Or would you go get the treatment? Get the treatment. Behavioral health, same thing. If something was broken or out of line, 
you would go and get it lined back up again with the proper treatment. So never feel like there's some stigma on uh, getting uh, behavioral health, mental health treatment because there's not. It's health. Health is health. All parts of your body. Get whatever you need. And you'll see some improvement. It's better than just trying to deal with it on your own. Dealing with it on our own is, is very hard to do. <sighs> but, you know, although treatment and care for depression are improving, treatments and care uh, options for depression, they're improving. There's still a lot of people who are suffering on a day-to-day basis. So that's why you need that professional, that professional help. I'm not a professional helper in this regard. I'm a helper to encourage you to go get the help. The, the true medical professionals, okay? Um, again, our resource today is Unlock Your Full Potential. It's how to unlock your full potential so you can attract all your desires. Depression, if you're feeling that depression, and a lot of people do, I've been, I've had depression, maybe I still have it sometimes. It's associated with other illnesses too. So, uh, for example, they say patients with depression are 64% more likely to develop coronary artery disease. Do we want that? No. So get that depression treated, right? Likewise, depression is commonly found in patients with cancer, HIV, Parkinson's, and eating disorders. They say the relationship between suicides in the United States every year and depression is the culprit for two thirds of these cases. So again, we're watching each other, adults and children, okay? Everybody. The most smiliest face person could be the one that's the most depressed and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. What was that video I made the other day? <clears throat> I talked about how my spouse had choked me and I was never the same again. And so I go to work the next day and everybody's looking at me like, hey, Stephanie, da, da, da. like everything's just fine. But I was I was no longer the same and no one knew what had happened. So they're treating me the same because they don't know what happens. And I was never the same, right? So it's like you got to keep checking on people. People who look like they're fine might not be fine. And if you're not fine, find your medical professional or your support system, support group, and help you get there. Because sometimes when you're not fine, you're in a full uh, major depression, you can't even get your own self to help. You can't put two and two together to figure out what doctors are in your health plan, where can you go, how do you get the appointment, who do I, it's too much. You're like, oh, I can't even do it, forget it, I'm just going to lay here. And so that happens, right? So just be looking out for people. It's in your circle. Especially looking out for your kids. Kids today deal with things that we never had to deal with. And it weighs them down. So we got to be on the lookout for each other. It's how we flow. Dot Today TV is Stephanie Stallworth, ATL Traffic Lady, here to, to help us along and we'll help each other, right? We're a community together based on self-care, wellness, the art of well-being. We talk about living our best life and, and a life we don't have to take a vacation from our dream life etc we also got we got to live a healthy life mentally physically all areas of health right our soul's health also right spiritually so let's think about that and you know maybe you can't do it for yourself just reach out to somebody and say I need help and maybe they can help set the appointment if you're not in position to do it because um, sometimes we need help. All right, all right, I, I know I need to go to the doctor. And then you never call because there's too many steps. Oh, who can I go to? Oh, I got to go find somebody new to talk to. Oh, I don't want to talk to him. Oh, you know, and, there's, and it gets to be too much. You're like, I think Dr. Brian, you said sun, Sunday, you, you try to go do something for yourself. And then you're like, oh, and then, then you just sit down slowly. I said, I felt that thing because I know that thing. I just, I just sit down slowly and say, forget it. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do that thing today. And a lot of people get in that position. I know it because I've been there. Sometimes I still get there. And so we got to help each other. Depression, again, associated with other illnesses, including coronary artery disease. And um, depression also makes you feel hopeless sometimes. If you haven't understood that, maybe you haven't ever had depression. Like, why don't you just snap out of it? People tell you. Or you might tell people that. Well, it makes you feel hopeless sometimes.
you know, associating with depression and suicide, that feeling could be hopelessness. Others experience hopelessness too. And it becomes that vicious cycle makes you unable to control yourselves or your behaviors in the world around you. And yep, you can't control the world around you, but you can control yourself. But depression might not make you be able to do it as well. So you may not be functioning as well in your self-control. You may not be functioning as well in how do I get out of this pot? I can't even call Scotty to beam me up. I don't have enough energy for that. I don't even know Scotty, <laughs> right? So it's like, what are all these things that keep us from doing what we should do for ourselves, right? But I'm here to tell you that in fact, it is completely possible to gain control of your life and create the best life possible through your actions. So for those who feel hopeless about your life, it may feel like an unattainable goal to get out of that pot, but it is one that you can reach with the right help and ACT, I-O-N, action, action, we want action. How do you go about it? You gotta do have some, the right help and action. How do you go about it? I got this guide here that's going to help you get started. I'm going to introduce you to our resource today. It's called Unlock Your Full Potential. How to unlock your full potential so you can attract all your desires. Here's what you're going to get in this course. And you, you'll read the ebook with it. Um, you gain a lot of knowledge that you could use to your advantage in this scenario. Uh, here's what you're going to learn in this guide. You're going to learn how to commit to the process. Oh my gosh. How many times have we started something and then we stopped it? <laughs> I need to read this, my dog on stuff. How to commit to the process. This is the very first step to take on your path to unlocking your full potential. Without it, committing to the process, everything else is going to be a waste of time. If you have not committed to the process to carry this thing out, you're just wasting your time and everybody else's that's helping you. And I don't mean to say that in a way that says, well, so don't do it. But commit to the process. Then you fall off, get back on and commit to it again. Never give up. You never give up. As long as you get up one more time than you go down, you're winning. Always get back up. The ultimate goal is to commit to the process. It may take some on and off to commit to the process. I commit to it, I fell off. I commit to it, I fell off. Give yourself some grace. Say, at least I'm committing to the process. I'm getting back up and try it again. I'm going to try it again. I've tried it already. Oh, I keep, you know, I know this feeling. I live this feeling. I know what it is. And so... Commit to the process again. All right. Uh, you will also learn in this wonderful guide of mine, eight things that will help you define your potential so you will know your true purpose. Yes, because the clearer you are about this step, the better your results are going to be. What's your true purpose? What are you going for here? What are you supposed to be doing? And you'll also learn in this guide how you can manifest your desires uh, and how to, you know, speak things that are not as though they already were. And then suddenly you're going to be seeing that thing because God is going to set it up for you. Right? Can you visualize it? Are you desiring the things that he desires for you? Since he created you, he knows what you need. You'll also learn in this guide the power of vision boards, how to leverage that to your best advantage. You'll learn how to start habits that last a lifetime. We start things at the beginning of the year. I'm going to go to the gym three times a week. Woo, woo. You know, and you go three times a week for a week and a half. And then you're like, uh, I got to go do so-and-so. Oh, I got to do so-and-so. And, -so, and you may not commit to it. You want it to become a habit. It was after 20-something days, something may become a habit. So we want to start habits that will last a lifetime. So that it becomes a lifestyle, not just a habit. Of, oh, I got to go to the gym. Let that gym thing become your lifestyle. So it lasts a lifetime lifestyle for your lifetime um here's uh there's four important questions you'll learn that you need to use and ask yourself to form new habits we'll tell you about those you also learn uh in this great guide the negative effects of resentment and bitterness what i remember i used to go to therapists they're like what are you angry about i'm like i'm not even angry about anything but you know if you drill down to it maybe i have some resentment for some stuff that may have gone on or some bitterness. So there's negative effects to resentment and to bitterness. And you might have to drill down and see what that, what are you resentful about or bitter about? Even though you still try to look at things in, in the best way possible, there might still be some roots of some of that in there. So you'll get the help to get that, get that addressed, right? Uh, you will learn in this great guide 
of unlocking your full potential to attract everything you desire. You will also learn, you will also learn how to let go of everything in your past that has negatively impacted you so you can finally, we just say, <laughs> we joking about in my parents' house, finally, so you can finally move forward is, is, the, is the end of that. But <laughs> my dad and mom and my youngest son was just a little kid and we lived, we lived out of town and we would come in town and all his cousins were there and he'd be waiting for his cousin to come over. It's mostly girl cousins when they wait for the one boy cousin to come. And then here comes the cousin in the house. And he had been waiting all day. When are they coming? When are they coming? When are they coming? And he's a little, he's a little kid. And then, ding dong, the doorbell rings. And he's like, finally. And he goes running to the door. <laughs> so every time I say finally, I'm like, finally. That's our thing we say in our family. Finally. So how to let go of everything in your past that has negatively impacted you so you can finally move forward. I'm finally going to do this thing. Yes. You can do this. Let's finally move forward because everything in your past that has negatively impacted you can keep you from your desirable life future. That desirable life, right? Yeah. The things in your past that have negatively affected you or me, they can keep us from what we're trying to go forward to if we're not addressing them. So this resource will teach you this is what you'll learn, how to let go of everything in your past that has negatively impacted you so you can finally move forward. This is an important point, an important step here. You'll also learn how to track your progress. Come on, let's quantify it. Can you say quantification? Let's quantify this thing. Measuring progress can take the form of many different things and ways. And that section will discuss how to track your progress. Who doesn't like a, who doesn't like a progress chart, especially if you're progressing upward? Yes, yes, yes. Or check, 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 did this, did that. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll learn how to track our progress here and measure the progress, quantify that thing. How well have you done? Don't you know, like when you get your performance reviews, right? Or when kids, <laughs> kids have IEP and they, they got to track their performance, you know, 70% of the time they do so-and-so they want to, they want to move up to 85% of the time that they're able to do so-and-so, whatever that is. Right. Um, so let's quantify that thing. Here you'll also learn how to view failures instead of letting them stop you. How to view, how should you view a failure? Because failures should be considered a lesson learned out of what, what didn't work. Okay, I won't do that again. What did I learn from that? And and let's let's see how to view them properly instead of letting them stop you. Oh, man. I was talking about my son who applies for five jobs and thinks he should have a job already. I'm like, listen, you got to apply for 55 jobs. You got to apply for 100 jobs. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people out there looking for, looking for stuff. You can't let a failure of a failed interview or a failed whatever stop you. How to view failures instead of letting them stop you. This resource, unlock your full potential so you can attract all your desires, will teach you. You will learn how to view failures because we're all going to have failures. But don't let the failure stop you. You might have tried to get out that pot. You're dying to get out that pot. If you stay in the pot, you're going to die anyway. But you're dying to get out that pot. I got to get out of here. My whole life is ahead of me outside of this pot. <laughs> <laughs> but if if you try to get out a bunch of times and you can't get out, they keep locking you in with whatever. Um, how to view these failures. Don't let them stop you. You got to keep trying. I said, get up one more time than you laid down. You got to get up again. You got to get up again. I know you're tired. I know you're worn out. You got to get up again so you can get to the finally. Yes, I got what I really want. Yes, I'm in that life I desire. Thank you, Lord. I knew you could help me do that thing, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing but you. Nothing but you. You also learn how to stay motivated to enhance your whole entire life. How to stay motivated to enhance your whole life. Your whole life. Let's enhance our whole life. And much, much more. Again, our resource today. Or how we flow that today resource is called Unlock Your Full Potential. And it's how to unlock your full potential so you can attract all your desires. And God will give you all your desires of your heart when you make his desires for you, your desires. He created you. He knows what, what you should desire best. He created everything about you. He knows what he knows what makes you tick. He knows what he put in you. He knows what you're looking for, even if you don't know what you're looking for. And then when you finally figure out what you're looking for, finally figure out your purpose, finally figure out what he wanted for you to have then you go run into the door like finally yes you know you ain't in that pot no more and you are living 
your best life ever baby that is what it is let's give god some glory for that hello 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 sir meet me at the gross sir oh we so we are looking at this one and uh, amazing video what in the crabby patty is going zones get out of that pot <laughs> what's definitely star with ATL traffic lady on how we flow dot today tv listen listen linda listen linda last night today is uh, wednesday last night was group therapy bible study at uh, new birth missionary baptist church i was trying to find their video here let me see uh from last night senior pastor dr jamal harrison bryant he had uh bishop george bloomer come in to minister to the people and oh my gosh it was so amazingly good you have to go back and watch it it's a group therapy live from new birth on tuesday march 26 2024 let me see he entitled it uh canceling the curse and part of what he talked about in there uh he talked about so much he talked about so much. You got to watch the whole thing. And in the end, it just, whoo, it just went all the way up, right? Canceling the curse. Canceling the curse. He also said, uh, let me see where that part is. I'm looking for what they had on the screen there. He said, uh, where is it? Where is it? Let me get it here. Yeah, so go to uh, newbirth.org to watch it or go to YouTube. Look for New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Search New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. And I think on the Facebook page also, you can watch it as well. It'd be great if you can watch it on the Flow Streaming Service, the Praise God Network. What? So maybe one day we'll be able to do that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where is it? Where is that thing? Oh, yeah. And so a part of it, he said, look who's, what's that? Look who's with me now. <laughs> look who's with me now. Yeah, he, he brought the whole thing in. Look who, oh, he said, look who I'm with now. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> look who I'm with now. He talked about for a successful man, the best position for the woman in his life is in his ear. Who's in your ear? Who do you have in your ear? Who do you have speaking into you? Are they speaking life? Or are they speaking death into you? Are they yelling? Or are they telling you what you need to hear? Not what you want to hear. It's not always what you want to hear. You might get mad with them, like, why are you saying that? But then when you reflect and think about it, you're like, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Keep me on, keep me on, on, on a good course here. And in fact, getting you to a better course, perhaps sometimes, right? So that you can heal, be better, learn some new things, manifest some wonderful new things and, and and walk in your full purpose that god has for you sometimes god puts the help meet in your space and in your ear he orchestrates that thing and, and and orchestrates the meeting in a divine way and so be looking for that watch for them don't just let anybody have access to your ear because next thing you know they're gonna have you in that boiling pot eating a biscuit <laughs> slowly killing you <laughs> and then we feel dead on the inside and then we don't want to do anything. We just get stuck in that depression place. Oh, I'll just stay here. Not do anything else. But no, you have an abundant life ahead. <clears throat> God ordained life ahead that I believe you can see. You just have to go get it. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for you. All right, you guys, look who I'm with now. <laughs> hey, Bishop George Bloomer, you good in my book, sir. That was great last night. Thank you so very much. I was feeling sick last night too. But boy, by the time I was done watching that, I was up, praising, all that stuff, worshiping, feeling good. Then I laid back down. I was feeling sick again. But not it didn't take it took a long time before I felt sick again. So um that kind of that kind of healed me up a little bit. Just what I needed to hear. Thank you. Glory to God. Y'all gotta go watch it again. It's group therapy. Live from New Birth, it was on Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Bishop George Bloomer was ministering for uh, Reverend Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, who was uh, doing another uh, thing that he had to do that, that day. 
But Friday, 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 all roads lead to new birth. You got to come on in. It's Good Friday service. We're having a joint service with World Changers Church International and Creflo Dollar. He's going to be ministering the word with new birth. So, so World Changers and New Birth together at New Birth in Stonecrest, 6400 Woodrow Road. 6400 Woodrow Road. We have our own exit off the interstate. Exit at Lithonia Industrial Boulevard out on the east side, on the east side. So Collie Park and Stonecrest together on Friday, 7.30 p.m. Saturday, get in line early, and I mean early, doggone it, uh, for the King's Table Ministry. They have uh, the food ministry where you come, line up in your cars. It's fully orchestrated. It's so well done. Thank you, Dr. Carla Stokes and your, your team. It's, it's so well done. Um, but get in line early. It's while supplies last. You get your whole Easter thing. And I think they said groceries for up to two weeks. So that's going to be a blessing for, for families. Uh, and then Sunday, 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 all roads lead to new birth again. I mean, why would you go anywhere else for Easter Sunday than new birth? Dr. Jamal Bryan will be back again. And he'll be ministering the word for us on Resurrection Sunday. Special musical guest, Todd Delaney. And uh, of course, our own music ministry is fully amazing as well. Jonathan Nelson, Tiffany Boone, all of them, right? And so, yeah, it's all good. Ashton, Janae, the whole team, the whole team. Everybody's great. I love, I love, I love New Birth. I love y'all over there. I love y'all. I do. I enjoy that place. I enjoy these people. It's a beautiful thing. I'm glad to be part of the New Birth family. All right, you guys, so here we are. We're in the middle of Holy Week, and um, hey, keep holding up the bloodstained banner, baby, because we got to get this thing done. The time is right. We are here yet for an appointed time. The vision's for an appointed time. We are at that appointed time. So I'm trying to trying to give you all the resources you need, all the extra oomph you need to get yourself out of that crab pot, okay? Okay, whoop, whoop, whoop. You got this thing, you got this thing. You got this thing. It will be all right. In fact, it's already all right. It's already all right. What I post, um, let's see. Let's see if I find it. It was a, a Beverly Crawford was on Larry Tinsley's show, her song. Let me see if I find it. Uh, it's about time for a miracle. It's about time for a miracle. Let me see if I pull that up. But yes, honey, we got to get our miracle in uh, this week. You're next in line for a miracle, said. Who said that? Shirley Caesar. But Beverly Crawford said, can't you see? It's about time for a miracle. What is going on? Let's get this miracle in. Let me see if I can share this screen. Last, The last screen share of the day. Then I'm going to go off and nourish my body with some good food. Some uh, good tea with ginger and garlic and cayenne and turmeric and all of that. And honey and lemon. And take some medicine and go rest myself so I can be my best self coming on up here, right? Y'all dig, y'all dig, y'all dig. All right, let me share this uh, screen one last time. We're gonna go out on a strong note here. Come on, let's go out on a strong note. Beverly Crawford. Beverly Crawford, let's see. Mm, which one is it here? I think it's this here. Don't be the crab eating the biscuit in TikTok. Please and thank you. Whatever you do, don't do that. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't let it be that. Don't let it be that. Let's see if this works or not. Du, 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 du. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, I don't know if it'll if it'll share or not, but we'll try. We'll try it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll try, try again. Let's see. Let's make this thing smaller. I need two big screens. I got a big screen and a laptop screen. I need some big screens in here. Let me make this thing sing like I want it to sing. Uh, let's see. Where are we? All right, here we go. 
I think, I think. I don't even know if the audio, I don't know if I set it up for the audio to play. Let's see. <laughs> it may or may not play. Let's see. Let's see, Beverly. Yeah, yeah I don't know if it'll play. But go on my Twitter page, ATL Traffic Lady, or my Instagram. It's about time for a miracle. There's no one bringing my bar me and relax. Got the traffic here. It's If I turn this music off, that might help. Ah, oh, me and all my fully, fully used up computing uh, <laughs> power on this, this little computer I got. All right, all right, all right. So it's uh, she says, can't you see? Can't you see? Can't you see? It's about time for a miracle. It is. God is working a miracle. He's working miracles. Thank you, Beverly Crawford. You can check this out on my Twitter page, also on my Instagram, at ATL Traffic Lady. I can't get it to play right. I guess I have too many resources open here. Let me get a more powerful computer next time. But in the meantime, I'm grateful for what I have. It is what it is. But yeah, you can check it out on Twitter, at ATL Traffic Lady. Follow me there, or follow me on Instagram, at ATL Traffic. Ooh. The Traffic Center, but got to get praise on, too. No, I won't play fully. But yeah, so, you know, let me pull this down here. Yeah, she says, can't you see? It's about time for a miracle. Come on, miracle. Can't you see? Can't you see? It's about time for a miracle. God is working a miracle. Just for you. Just for me. Just for us. Right. There's so many miracles here with us here in our community. I mean, so many testimonies are coming through. I have to share some of them with you. If you have a testimony about how you've overcome, how you've persevered through some stuff here, how you learned something, something helped you. Drop me a note, a DM, a comment, a chat box, whatever, and let me know about it. We'll share the joy with the community because we're here to support each other. And that's what we do here in How We Flow, not today. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing here. All right, you guys. I love you so much. Mm, love you. God bless you. Love hugs, pats, and all of that. You know, I pour my, my heart out to you every day. And, um... Hey, pour some heart back into me, too. <laughs> I'm praying for you. Pray for me, okay? And uh, we pray for each other. We love on each other. We help each other. We encourage each other. And we hold each other accountable. We speak the truth in love. And, and that's what we're doing here in this community. All right? So for someone in the community, I, I gave you all, all I had to give yesterday. I gave you all you need to know. All, all the, the loving support that, that you might ever want to know about. And hopefully you take it and run with it because the best is yet to come baby yes all right you guys can't you see it's about time for a miracle time to get up out that pot baby what in the crabby patty is going zones get out of that crabby pot <laughs> stop eating the biscuit come on up out of that thing we got work to do we got a job to do we got kingdoms to build people to impact lives to change people to bring to Christ. Come on now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We want all of that. All of that. All of that. Yes. All right, you guys. I love you so much. Thanks for hanging in here with me. Um, how long have we been on? Oh my, 130 hour, 30 something minutes. Well, time flies when you're having fun. Listen, I'm just here to help. You know, you got any suggestions for me? Help me too. <laughs> we all need some help. And uh, we help each other. So it's how we flow out today. Join our community. We are a community centered on health care, health care, self care, <laughs> health care and self care, health care, not health care, health care, self care and wellness, the art of well being, living our best life ever, uh, continuous improvement, personal development, um, all the things that are going to really get us out of whatever ruts we may be in. And sometimes we're in a rut and we might not know the way out. So we're going to hear, we're going to help each other. So share the videos, like the videos, subscribe to the channels, uh, all of that. And uh, you tell two friends and they'll tell two friends and so on and so on and so on. Before you know, we change the world. And that's what we're doing here and how we flow. Dot today, it's Stephanie Stallworth, the ATL traffic lady. I'll be back in the traffic center early in the morning, five o'clock in the morning with Larry Tinsley. 
on the people station v103 i'll see you then okay um yeah come on up out of that pot baby they are killing you slowly they gonna eat you up toss you out get three more just like you get rid of them too and keep moving because they are nothing but a consumer they're not a giver they're a taker you don't want to take her okay be a giver and be with a giver and you guys will never run out never run out of the joy god is so good god is so good just say god what is it what is it what is it what is it and and he'll show you all right in case you're unsure all right babies love you god bless you Mwah. love hugs pats all of that give me hearts heart eyes all of those things and i'll see you in the next video and you better not be in that doggone pot yo dig <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm playing, but I'm not playing. So come on. I'm trying to help you out. And uh, if you see me in the pot, shucks, help me out too, okay? All right. Love you. And I'll talk to you on the next video. See you in the morning on the radio.